Why, oh why, curriculum writers, have you said students don't need to know the names and the order of the months? And I say they don't need to because it doesn't appear in year three either, or year four, and so on. If it's been removed by mistake, please put it back in. G'day teachers, I'm Dr. Peter Price. Let's have a look at the year two consultation curriculum for 2022. So this is a personal review with my personal comments about what I think of the curriculum as it is proposed for next year. Um, and I'm encouraging teachers to put their hands up and have a say um, in, their own, uh, in their own way, whatever suits them. So let's have a quick look. The curriculum overview for year two, you can see the strands that are divided up. The Australian Curriculum 2010 is on the left. You can see the strands that are there and the consultation curriculum dated 2021 for 2022 is on the right. You can see the list on the right is uh, simpler. The number of content descriptors is roughly the same. There are 23 under the old curriculum and 20 under the new one. Uh, not significant enough to make a big difference. This is my executive summary slide. The biggest change is place value. Hallelujah. We get place value appearing in the year two curriculum. That is a wonderful thing. It's so important that students understand how numbers are put together and about the effects of tens and ones and so on. The biggest gap in the year two curriculum is the months and seasons. We'll come to that as we get to it. For some reason, the curriculum writers have decided students don't need to know that information um, anymore, although they used to. My summary, my more detailed executive summary, it's a somewhat confusing backtracking of content in the 2010 curriculum. We'll come to that as we go. There's a focus on addition and subtraction and the relationships between them. That's good. We've streamlined measurement attributes. That's a very good thing. We've introduced telling the time. It used to be in year one. That's moved completely out of year one now. So year ones can't read the time, but year twos will be able to. Um, now year twos were able to read the time um, previously, now they get to do the introduction. Um, I happen to think that's too late and year ones were quite capable of it, but anyway. And lastly, we have expanded content descriptors in statistics. And just as a general comment, that's true across the board, across all um, year levels that we're looking at. So we have content descriptor identifiers. Let me just quickly explain how they work. In the old curriculum, we started with ACM, Australian Curriculum Mathematics. Number and algebra was given a strand designation of NA, and then a three-digit number 027 for this particular example. Those numbers increment through the curriculum, through the strands, through the year levels, all the way to the end, to, to whatever the biggest number was of the, the um, content descriptors. Two for year two, so if, there's a, if after the M, the next digit um, tells you that's the year level. So you can tell this is a year two um, content descriptor just by the fact that there's a two there. Number has been separated from algebra, so it's just N on its own. And zero one refers to the first content descriptor for number. When we get to A for algebra, that will also have a zero one, and M for measurement will also have a zero one, and so on. So the numbering system is um, much improved. I commend the uh, curriculum writers for that. Let me explain quickly the colour coding that I've used in this document. Now, I've quoted the, the curriculum documents verbatim, of course. I'm not breaching copyright here. These are the statements that are in the existing Australian Curriculum 2010 and the Consultation Curriculum 2021. All I've done is add some colour coding to help understand what has changed. So this slide um, illustrates how I'm indicating the changes. Text that's been omitted from the old curriculum into the new one. So it used to be in the old one, it's completely gone in the new one. I've colored it orange and struck through that text, so it's crossed out. Text that is orange, but not crossed out indicates it's consistent with the new curriculum, but it's not actually stated. So it may be just expressed in a slightly different way. Blue text indicates new content in the new curriculum that wasn't present in the old one. Um, and that's, generally speaking, that's a very good thing. 
to be honest with you, and just, just a general comment, I think the curriculum writers have done a very good job of adding detail, adding content. They've done a great job. They've, they've put together more detailed descriptions, descriptors of what is expected of teachers and students. Let's move on. So we're going to look at the very first content descriptor for number in the new curriculum. Um, the old one had recognized model res represent and order numbers to at least a thousand and then count and order small collections of Australian coins and notes according to their value. Um, the new one has a lot of blue text. They've retained the idea of recognizing and ordering numbers to at least a thousand and then they've added more detail which is all um, a very good idea. Now there's a sub note here, I'll just mention this as we go. Um, the counting and ordering small collections of coins has gone to a different part of the um, proposed curriculum. So it will appear, but it's just in a different spot. We'll come back to it. Let's look at the second number content descriptor for the new curriculum. We've got group, partition, rearrange and rename numbers up to 1000. Most of that's in black text, indicating it's come straight across from the old one. The old one said group, partition and rearrange collections up to 1000 in hundreds, tens and ones to facilitate more efficient counting. That's all fine. The blue text indicates it's been expanded and it's mentioned, as I said before, it's mentioned place value specifically, and that is very, very useful. I'm glad that it's there. It also explains the, um, the role of a zero digit in place value notation. Now, according to the document that we've been provided for the new curriculum, they've subsumed two other old content descriptors, count and order small collections of Australian coins and notes, and explore the connection between addition and subtraction. The thing is, neither of those appear in the new content descriptor, so I think that's a mistake somewhere in the documentation. So we're not going to spend any longer on it. Next, we have the third number content descriptor, and this one is all in blue because it relates to new content. Estimate the quantity of objects in large sets using knowledge of the size of numbers to make and justify reasonable estimates. I love that. There's a lot you can do with helping students understand how big a number is. I remember asking students a question like, how big is a thousand? What could you buy with a thousand dollars? Where might you see a thousand people all together at the same time? And of course you can tailor the size of the number according to the year level that you're uh, speaking to. So that's good. Let's move on. The fourth one. Um, this is about problem solving. There's been quite a few changes. There's a lot of mixed up orange and black text and blue and black text. In the old curriculum, we had solve simple addition and subtraction problems using a range of efficient mental and written strategies, solve problems by using number sentences for addition or subtraction, and explore the connection between addition and subtraction. So there's a lot going into this one. In the new curriculum, we've got model situations including money and solve problems involving addition and subtraction, and it goes on and on and on. Basically, I think that this has improved. We've got extra text to explain what we mean here. We're combining things together. It's all about solving problems involving addition and subtraction. And it gives some um, ideas for how we're going to approach that using part whole reasoning, number sentences, physical or virtual materials, diagrams and efficient strategies, and so on. The old curriculum mentions specifically mental and written strategies, which sort of implies that the third strand of strategies, which is digital, weren't to be used. Um, the modern curriculum just says efficient strategies, and I think that's a positive move. Looking at the number content descriptor number five, there's a lot of new blue text in this one, and this um, is, is really a parallel to the previous statement. It's about solving problems, but this time it's using the operations of multiplication and division, representing the situation as repeated addition, equal groups and arrays and so on, using a range of efficient strategies. It's very much a parallel statement with the, the previous one looking at addition and subtraction. It clarifies things, makes it easier to see. The old curriculum content descriptors included the phrase recognize and represent, and those have both been removed, but they're implied in what's um, still there in the new statement. Let's look at number six. Recognize and describe one half as one of two equal parts of a whole. Connect halves, quarters and eighths through repeated halving and interpret common uses of those fractions. This all comes from year one. 
So in the old curriculum, the year one statement was recognize and describe one half as one of two equal parts of a whole. Now that's basically um, been put into the year two curriculum. I don't know why people think that year ones aren't capable of understanding fractions that are halves. I think students of that age will almost certainly be using the language of a half. And if they can understand it, I think they should probably be learning it formally in maths. I stand to be corrected if, if someone knows more about it than I do. Um, but anyway, it's been moved. So now the uh, year twos are having fractions introduced to them, whereas it used to be year ones. So we're starting with one half as one of two equal parts of a whole. And then it goes through repeated halving, looking at quarters and eighths. So um, that's all fine. I think There's, that's, uh, that's useful for students. Now, counting and ordering small collections of Australian coins and notes according to their value from the old curriculum has moved, and it's a little hard to see where it's gone. It's been moved to number elaborations. Those are both the content descriptor number one for number and the elaboration is number four. So it's in the elaborations somewhere, although it's not actually stated specifically in the content descriptor. That's all I've got to say about that. Let's look at algebra, the first content descriptor for algebra. Here we have a lot of changes that have happened. Um, in the old curriculum, we had describe patterns with numbers to identify mis missing elements, and then a second content descriptor Investigate number sentences initially, those increasing and decreasing by twos, threes, fives, and tens from any starting point. The language has been rearranged. It's got some new language. It's removed some of the old language. Recognize, identify, describe, and continue additive patterns that increase or decrease by fixed amounts. So it's really focusing on patterns and what patterns are. The fact that they're repeated um, increments or decrements identify missing elements. There's a lot of good verbs there for dealing with patterns. The old curriculum specified increasing and decreasing by twos, threes, fives, and tens, indicating that those are particular sequences that are important. I think it's a good thing that the new one doesn't specify that. So in other words, it doesn't restrict teachers to just those increments and decrements. Let's move on. The second algebra content descriptor is all on its own because there was no previous content descriptor in the old curriculum. Recognize and connect number patterns from one context to a pattern of the same form in another context. Now if you look at the, um, the preceding content descriptors for patterning in Foundation and Year 1, you'll see that it involves different sorts of patterns with different sorts of elements in the patterns. This content descriptor allows you to explore that further and look at patterns that are parallel to each other so that we can recognize and connect number patterns from one context to a pattern of the same form means that we might have a pattern that you could call an a b pattern a then b then a then b then a then b that could be two different sounds so you could have a clap then a stamp clap stamp clap stamp that's an a b pattern red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, there's an A, B pattern. So it's a pattern of the same form. So it's a, it's a great um, extension of what the students are doing already in Foundation and Year One. Let's move on. We're looking at measurement. So we've got the code with 2M and then the two digit number. We can see in the old scheme there, the old curriculum, there were two content descriptors. One refers to length, area, volume, and capacity. The second one refers to masses. Those have effectively been combined, although area and volume have been removed. I think that's a good thing. Area and volume are complicated measurements to take. They involve two and three dimensions, far more difficult than measuring length. So I fully um, concur with the curriculum writers about removing those two. And they've combined the other um, attributes together so we now have length, capacity, mass all in one and duration. So that's nice. So we're going to measure things according to length of time and that's all a good thing. Um, it also includes a mention of using units without gaps or overlaps. 
and smaller units for accuracy when necessary. There are some principles of measurement that are very, very important to be introduced to students at an appropriate time. And I think this probably is about the right time for you too. Looking at measurement number two, we've got use a calendar to identify the date and determine the number of days in each month. That's the same that was in the old curriculum. And then it says, and the total number of days in a year. Now, I'm sorry, but I think this is a mistake because it says, really, use a calendar to determine the total number of days in a year. Who is going to use a calendar to count up all the days in the year? It's cumbersome and ridiculous. So I'm not quite sure what the intention was here, but I think it's, it's badly written and something needs to be done to say how students are going to find out the total number of days in the year. I actually think that's too early, knowing there's 200 sorry, 365 days or 366 in a leap year seems to me is a little bit advanced for year two and would be better in year three. So I think that bit needs fixing somewhat, however that's done. Looking at year th uh, uh, the third measurement content descriptor for year two for measurement, we've got recognize and tell time to the hour, half hour and quarter hour. I'm indicating there's a, a typographical error there. It should have a hyphen in half hour. Curriculum writers, you can see that the hour has been added and we've got recognize and tell time. The old content descriptor was in year one and it said tell time to the half hour and then year two had tell time to the quarter hour using the language of past and two. So it's all been combined into one and as I said before, telling the time has now been introduced to year two, not year one. You might feel strongly about that. I really don't have an opinion. I think year one possibly could have told the time. I think it's probably a good idea for them to tell time to the hour. Um, but I don't feel that strongly about it that I think it matters a whole lot. Like I say, you may feel differently. Please leave a comment. Measurement number four, identify and describe measures of turn. Good. Quarter, half, three quarters and full turns. You can see the three quarters and full turns have been added and in everyday situations has been added and measures of turn has been added. Those are all valuable additions to the curriculum. Uh, this has been moved from location and transformation and we've just beefed it up and I think that's, that's a good thing. The last old content descriptor has been removed completely. This is name and order, months and seasons. This is one of the big changes, one of the things that's now missing why, oh why, curriculum writers, have you said students need, don't need to know the names and the order of the months? And I say they don't need to because it doesn't appear in year three either or year four and so on. By some level, we expect the students to know it. Possibly it's been moved to another subject area. Although I can't think what that would be. I don't understand why it's gone. If it's been removed by mistake, please put it back in. Now, on the second part, to name and order seasons, that's highly problematic for Australian students because our seasons are all over the place. Not, not that they're completely different from the rest of the world, but we lack an autumn. In Queensland, at least, we don't get autumn. You get the occasional tree that goes orange or brown, and that's it. And we don't really have a spring. You can sort of see spring. The media always tell us when it's the first day of spring and the first day of summer and that sort of thing. So I think seasons are a bit problematic. We have two majority seasons, uh, summer and winter, or if you're in the far north, the wet and the dry. I don't know what to do with seasons. I think seasons needs unpacking. To leave it out completely seems a mistake, just as leaving months is a mistake in my view. Anyway, let's move on. Looking at space, we have a strand called space with the code SP. There's not much that's been retained. You can see the only black text here is shapes and objects. So in the, the new curriculum, we have recognize, compare and classify regular and irregular shapes and objects, describing features and properties using spatial terms, including parallel lines. That's all great. I love it. However, we've got to look at what's been removed. In the old curriculum, it just said, describe and draw two-dimensional shapes. Now, with and without digital technologies, you can leave that out, I don't mind. 
Then it said, describe the features of three-dimensional objects. That was a, a separate content descriptor. Here's the thing, content, the uh, curriculum writers have decided to remove the phrase two-dimensional as an adjective for shapes and the phrase three-dimensional as an object, adjective for objects. As I've said in previous videos, I think that's a mistake. Shapes are two-dimensional, objects are three-dimensional, and it helps teachers to say so. Otherwise, we can get confused about what, we, what do we mean by an object. Object is so vague you could say, look at this square, what sort of object, it, you know, we can refer to a square as an object. It's far clearer to say, let's have things with depth and, and um, physical presence as three-dimensional, call them, call them three-dimensional objects. And flat two-dimensional shapes that don't have a physical entity, call them two-dimensional shapes. I think that's a mistake. Another one, I think that should be put back in, please, curriculum writers. Space number two, locate positions and identify relative positions of key features of a familiar. Those are all the same words that were in the old one. Familiar space represented in two dimensions. That needs no um, hyphen in there, thank you, curriculum writers. And move positions according to directions and path pathways. So it's been added a little bit to... The first one referred to maps, interpret simple maps of familiar locations. The second one doesn't mention maps. It says, what does it say? Locate positions and identify relative positions of key features. I think maps should be in there. I can't see why we shouldn't say the word map. It makes it obvious for teachers that this is a mapping um, content descriptor and it makes it obvious for students that we're talking about maps. So again, I don't understand why that's been left out. And I personally think maps as a piece of vocabulary is a good word to include. Space number three, it's almost identical. Recognize and explain the effect of one-step one transformations, including translation, reflection, and, and the new one is rotation on shapes using dynamic geometric software when appropriate. The old curriculum referred to slides and flips, which is the less technical terms for translation and reflection. I think it's better to have the correct language in the curriculum, so that's a, a positive move. And they've added rotation, I think that's good. Let's move on. We've got um, a single probability content descriptor, so we'll look at that. It has the code 2P01. We've got Identify practical activities and everyday events that involve chance. Describe outcomes and then a lot more language in terms of the relative likelihood. While a chance event may occur, it may also not occur and there's no way of knowing which will be the case in advance. That's a very useful phrase there to explain to the teacher exactly what it is we're looking at here. A chance event by definition may occur or it may not occur and you can't tell which is the, 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 um, what, what, what is going to be the outcome. That's the whole point of saying it's a chance outcome. So that beefs up the language. We've taken out the words likely and unlikely and certain and possible. I think teachers should use that language. It's, it's sort of implied in there, so I haven't crossed it out in the old content descriptor, but I think if we could somehow insert that in again, that's probably a good thing. Statistics, number one. Statistics has three content descriptors. So we have looking at questions of interest involving one categorical variable, gather data relevant to the question, and then use the variation in data to reason and respond. So we've expanded the language. It's almost the same as the old one. Um, that's a good thing. The second statistics content descriptor expands the word data into a whole lot of extra language, which is good. Acquire categorical data sets through surveys, observation, or experiment using digital tools to assist where appropriate. Sort into relevant categories and display data for summary using lists and tables. That's all very valuable. As I said previously, um, the statistics strand has been really beefed up. It's got a lot more language, a lot more verbs, a lot more explanation of what teachers are teaching. I think that's a good thing. I just want to make a quick comment about this idea of using digital tools to assist where appropriate. 
this pops up in the curriculum in different strands and different content descriptors. It's not very frequent that it pops up. And when it does, I think, why does it suddenly appear? I think perhaps it should be clarified which areas need digital tools and which areas don't, which areas should have digital tools, which ones are mandated that you will use digital tools. I don't know. It just feels a bit strange that it, it's sometimes there and oftentimes it's not even mentioned, even though it could be. Anyway, let's look at the last one. This is statistics number three, and it's again expanded a lot on what was there. It's talking about creating representations of data. And it again mentions using software where appropriate. Compare the different representations, identify and describe common and distinctive features. The extra language is a big help. Um, as I said previously. And one last comment here. For some reason, some words have been omitted from the new curriculum. It's, they're not crossed out. They're not totally removed. They just aren't stated specifically. And this is the, the reference to lists, table and picture graphs. I think that's useful. I think it should still be there because it helps teachers think, what am I going to be doing for here? Oh, I could do lists. I could do tables. I could do picture graphs. By all means, say, for example, it doesn't have to be a definitive list or an exhaustive list, I should say, but it would be helpful to have it there in some form. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of the Year 2 curriculum. As I said, there's not massive changes in Year 2, but there are significant differences. Um, there's been a lot of in improvement in the amount of vocabulary that's included to help teachers. There have been a number of situations, number of places where language has been completely removed. Oftentimes I find myself saying, why did you take that out? I think you should have left it in. Um, I look forward to reading your comments to say what you think about this um, as we go through it. Please let me encourage you to have your say, as I'm saying in emails that I'm sending to um, members and contacts in our email list, you should have your say. Um, the curriculum writers won't know what you think. They won't think there's anything that needs to be changed unless you and I speak up and say, well, actually, we think this should be changed and that should be altered and so on. By all means, tell them what's working well. They'd love to hear from you about the things that are great, the improvements that have been made. And I've highlighted many, many improvements that I've, that I've seen along the way. But I do think there are some things that need changing. I encourage you to have your say and to put your hand up, as I said before. That's it for this video. If you've liked it, please uh, indicate by clicking the like. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. But for now, I'm finished and I'll talk to you in a future video. Bye.